We are out here at the Manufacturing Expo to celebrate modern day manufacturing um, and also to go over some opportunities within our industry for employment and come together as a community and, and thrive. We've been doing this event for quite a while. Again, this is our sixth one. And although last year brought a lot of challenges through the pandemic, we had to move to a virtual venue. This year, we're finally back out, we're out in person, giving everyone the chance to show off all the wonder products that they make here out in East County. And uh, so far, it's been a great event. We've had several hundred attendees. We have more than 40 manufacturers out here showcasing their wares. And uh, we're very excited to be back in person to be able to do this again. It is a day to celebrate manufacturing and just these amazing companies that are in our backyard. And it's to educate the future workforce and students about career paths that are in manufacturing. And we're really heavily trying to help students understand how to get careers and get interested into careers that they're going to really feel fulfillment. So we have a bunch of different programs that we're advertising. I feel that Taylor knows the potential of El Cajon. I love the fact that they are employee owned. You know, a lot of their a lot of their employees live here in East County. So it is they're a community within a community at Taylor. So High Tech is a manufacturer, one of the biggest servo manufacturers on the planet but we also manufacture commercial drones and peripheral devices for commercial drones, along with providing commercial drone services. And events like this are kind of showcase what it is to be uh, a CT student in the Grossman Union High School District and have the opportunity to come out and learn about careers um, in, that relate to CTE, that relate to their pathway, and also provide them with resources um, to continue their education at the community college, which for us, our partners at Grossman and Cuyamaca are where many of our CTE programs um, will transition to or go on to further their, uh, their training and their education.
scrumptious. Exquisite. Hi. Hi, thank you for coming. Can I take my mask off? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna take it off. No, anyway. but yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. So your neighbors actually requested for you to come to her show. That makes a lot of sense. Hey, welcome to my home. And this is the 21 Questions with Vogue, correct? No, this is just an interview for the documentary. Oh, for sure. I hardly spend any time in here because I don't eat them. But when I do, this is a part of my diet. So, a very important, if not the most important step to starting my morning is coffee. And when I get coffee, you need the right mug. Something inspirational that speaks to me. This is more me. You need inspiration to be inspirational. Oh, you caught me in the stretch part of my workout. Could you explain that? I like to keep track of the local high school's bell schedule, you know, so I can keep tabs on the teens because they're very disruptive. Not like my dog. Not like Chanel? Never. I've been receiving phone calls and emails, and I have just had so many interactions with that woman. I noticed you have a ring on your finger. Are you married? Oh, um, technically, yes. I mean, yeah, legally. Legally. Yeah. My last name is Johnson, because I'm married happily. I love him so much. Is that your husband right there? Mm -hmm. Uh I'm Henry. I'm Karen's wife. I mean, I mean husband. Husband. So we're going to go get him a chair right now real quick. Oh, that's okay. He's fine. No, I, I'll go get him a chair. No, 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 no. It's, he's, he's, he's okay. He's fine right now. I kind of want a chair. But you're okay. Oh, okay. I'm still here. So no chair. He's fine. Is that good? Yeah. Oh, okay. Where'd you guys meet? Well, uh... We so I was having a really difficult time in Trader Joe's. That's where you worked. Um, I just saw a lot of issues and things wrong with the place, and I was like, oh, I should bring this to the manager right now. And then, so Karen 
fell in love with the manager. It's crazy, right? How long have you guys been together? A wonderful seven years. We're actually going to pull Henry aside for a solo interview. What? A solo interview. Like Just by like, himself? Yes, yes. I, I thought you asked me to come here. No, we did, but it's uh, we need to talk to Henry. Mm. Yeah, no, of course. So you want me to go? Yes. Uh, we're not showing this to her, are we? No, no, no. Okay. So, how do you feel in your marriage? Happy? Yeah, happy. Oh. <laughs> do you need a minute? Um, no, I'm good. Okay. Henry, I need to tell you the real reason we're here. Your neighbors sent us over here to, I guess, document you guys because we have a hunch that your wife is a Karen. And not her name. A Karen. Who like, you know, tell little kids they can't sell lemonade. Exactly. Does that sound like your wife? Yes. Okay, Henry, we're gonna bring in Karen right now and we really need your support when we break the news to her. Right now? Yes. She's gonna come into that door. Like she's gonna come in and we're gonna break I, yeah. I cannot do that. No, I, you can't. Can. No. Henry, please stay. She's gonna kill me. She's going to kill me. No, she's not. She's going to kill me. This is all your fault. Hey, you trap hey, me here. Calm down. You, you need to calm down. Get out of my way. Henry! <sighs> what happened to the other guy? He left when we told him why he's really here. Why is he really here? I'm talking about Karen's, you know. You know the people that always complain. Who is like calling in the manager? The valid people. You're mean to kids? You don't wear your mask? Yeah, that's me? No, what's You not? think that's me? Yes. Well, that is me. But that's completely okay. I'm totally valid. This is, this is illegal. I am not okay with this any of this. This is not illegal. You no, 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 but this isn't okay. This was supposed to be about me hey. and all my community. Whoa. Jokes on you guys? Hey, listen, calm I got down. You all. Calm down. I got you all. The whole time. We got you on camera. You're pulling a I got you on camera. Yeah, because that's my name. No, 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 no. I'm gonna call 911 right now. Why are you calling 911? Because this is illegal. This is not illegal. You fought. You this was supposed to be about oh me and how I have my community and how much I love my people. But no, this is something else. No, no, I get that. I am not.
Started in 1954 and located in the heart of El Cajon is Unarius, a place where out of the world ideas are the norm. During its many years, Unarius has helped many people from all over the world. Today we hope to make sense of the spiritual understandings of Unarius. Well, Unarius was started in 1954 by Ernest and Ruth Norman, who met in 1954, and they both inwardly knew that they had a bigger purpose in life, and Ernest knew that he was to write books, but he didn't know what it was to be about. Soon after they met, he started channeling, who was a very advanced clairvoyant, beautiful poetry, and then more books followed after that, and including some of the core texts called the Pulse of Creation series that explain the seven spiritual planes, what they're for as a place where people go in between lives to learn all different facets of life from science and healing arts and creativity. Unarius is a very advanced understanding of life based on an interdimensional understanding of energy, that everything is energy and that ultimately we're energy beings. And since energy can't be created or destroyed, there's a continuity of life. And when we pass over to the other side and we go to the spiritual realms, hopefully we're learning and preparing for our next lifetime. So what life is like here on planet Earth, it's really a schoolroom. We're learning from our experiences. Many Unarius members were so inspired by Ernst Norman's work that they made films based on his books. Kevin Kennedy, a longtime Unarius student, gave us a tour of where they filmed some of their movies. I need to look at the, the movie The Arrival. This is probably one of the most amazing and strongest points in that particular film. It's called The Tunnel of Stars. And in The Tunnel of Stars, our, our lead character, Zan, has this wonderful psychism. To get this to happen, to get this to work. Dave Osborne, who was the filmmaker director of that particular movie, had to pass that film through the camera up to 50 times. But to get the special effects, he drilled holes through this door, a perfect circle, and had those holes, you know, equal distance apart. And then he put, you know, had flashing light coming through the other side. On this side over here, he had tracks for the tripod and the camera. So he would move that camera forward, he'd back that film up, film it again, back it up, film it again. And doing that, like I said, over, you know, over time, 50 times, whatever, you end up with this wonderful illusion of going into these tunnel of stars, the stars coming at you, and the changing color of the stars. It's an amazing feat to have done that without money and without CGI. I'm particularly very proud of that. This 45 pound piece of machinery was called a porta pack. And uh, many times in these different psychodramas we did, it was my job to carry that around. One person's job it was, <laughs> was to just basically make sure they were following around the camera person so that uh, we can get all the live action that was needed for that particular scene. And this was done out at the, the land that Unarius and Uriel purchased, I want to say 1974, 73. We utilized it for our psychodramas. And you can see all the costumes that we were you know, made here for this particular psychodrama. It was just, it actually, it was a lot of fun. We just had a wonderful creative time doing all this stuff.
for celebrities and film, but San Diego has its own special connection to cinema's glorious past. Sure, you might be thinking of the Hotel Dell, but there's another location that has some pretty remarkable celebrity history, and that is none other than the Lafayette Hotel. The hotel was originally built in 1946, which probably was a, um, an interesting time period because it was the end of the war, so there was not much development going on. Initially, the hotel was actually named Emig Manor, based off of uh, the original owner, Larry Emig. Last name. Larry Immig, he is a entrepreneur, uh, made his money in cars, car dealerships in San Diego, and he had some good connections to Hollywood. So when he built the hotel and opened the hotel in 1946, it had attracted a lot of the, uh, the, the who is who of, from Hollywood. Uh, partially as well because one gentleman that was involved in building the pool, which was Johnny Weissmuller, who was an Olympic gold medalist. and. Um, actor from Hollywood. He was in the first Tarzan movies. He did um, help design the pool. That's why we call our wife's pool. Um, and he used to swim here a lot. He actually christened the pool. Other celebrity guests include Florence Chadwick, the first woman to swim the English Channel. And it is reported that she would use the pool for training purposes. Another regular was Bob Hope, comedian and actor of the 1940s. He was the first to check into the hotel. His friends in the Hollywood industry uh, made their way down from LA area, would stop here, I believe, on their way also going down to TJ in Mexico. So it's kind of like a cool San Diego hidden spot for all the stars. So then, after a few years of him owning it, he ended up selling it to Conrad Hilton of Hilton Hotels, and he made this kind of his own, in a sense that he ripped out all of Larry Immig's original, you know, signage and anything with his name in it, really, because uh, I think he had a big ego. He loved everything with his name. He had a big, giant gold star in the conservatory, kind of like what you would see on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And uh, the Conrad Hilton bought, sold the hotel, and then it went to a number of ownership changes throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s. And uh, 
So at, at one point the hotel was not even a hotel anymore. It was it had businesses in it, had like office buildings, some of the rooms were just left empty. The area around the hotel was at some point not the best. Now it's it's up and coming, but back then it was probably not the best neighborhood for some time. Had a few different owners throughout the years, of course, and so we just had uh, new ownership take over the hotel and they bought the place uh, back in March of 2021. And with the new ownership came a series of detailed renovations, better capturing the hotel's atmosphere for the customer's experience. Whether they spent it relaxing in their comfortable rooms, dining the Lafayette's richly flavorful specialties, or waltzing around a beautifully preserved ballroom conjuring up memories of a time long before our own. Um, I think just keeping a very unique style has drawn people to come to the hotel, but we're very iconic in the sense that we do have a unique history, so that kind of intrigues people to want to stay here. And uh, I just enjoy having that uniqueness of a building that has that longevity and that history um, versus perhaps a, a branded hotel or something that is brand new building. You don't have to go far to enjoy a celebrity studded history.
Say there, pal, that's a nice looking sandwich you got there. Thanks, my mom made it for me. How about we make a deal? I'll give you this carrot for that sandwich. Nice try. There's only one person who's gonna eat that sandwich, and that's me. Hey, is that a bird over there? I don't see no bird. Hey! Oh, look, a sandwich. Cool beans. Feeling kind of hungry. About to make a snack. Gonna eat a sandwich. My lips start to smack. Gonna take a second but Peanut butter jelly Tastes like applesauce Goes to my belly